right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and today is April 11th, so Thursday. We've got one more day of the week coming up for tomorrow. Uh, today was kind of a mixed day. It was, I think, a lot of chop out there. It was a bend and almost break day. Um, I saw a couple of things like the Qs, uh, which I will go over the technicals and the indices first. Uh, so, you know, coming into today, uh, what my feeling has been has been to try to take off more trades than add, uh, as I'm just feeling that we're overbought, and you know I don't know when we're going to get a little bit more volatility that comes in, but I want to be ready for that volatility if it does come in, and uh, I'm not going to rehash my whole thought because I've been thinking this way for basically the whole week. Now, uh, if you kind of look at what's been going on here, is we've basically just been chopping around all week long. Remember the last week was a huge week. The week before, you know, what chop here? And then, um, you know, so we've been making these moves up. So are we gonna kind of come in a little bit and do this? You know, that's kind of what I'm looking for, right? Uh, but it could be that we just kind of chop and, and maybe go a little bit higher. Uh, is also in the cards too, right? So it doesn't have to be exactly what I think. Uh, which could be, you know, a move into the blue line or kind of a check back into the support. Um, that's, you know, it doesn't always, it's not always a perfect picture. But today, um, very small move. You could see the candle uh, was a very tight range for the S&P. The Qs were a little bit different. And they, they've they been the one out of the, the three indices that I go through are the are SPY, Q, and, or S&P, NASDAQ, and the small caps, the Russell, right? So next, the Qs, I think, were most interesting on the day, and, and they've been the most overbought. They, I think, got to a 72-ish, or maybe a, it was a 74 uh, RSI a couple days ago. Um, right down here is where the RSI stu study is, which is kind of my barometer for how I want to uh, handle risk when these indices get really overbought. I tend to pare down risk a bit. Uh, so they're kind of just, they're still flirting with this danger zone of over 70 RSI. There, It's a 69 RSI. Uh, to, and, you know, it was interesting, the Qs, there's 100 names in the Qs. But if you kind of look through the Qs, sometimes it surprises you what names are the movers. Notice since the open, we were making lower highs all day long. Um, so right on the open, Profit taking, you know, profit profit takers, or you know, had to come in. Keep in mind, it's been very light volume, so any little headline or anything. What I've been saying is the market is very tight, meaning that it's low volume. We've been grinding higher, and it's almost waiting for a negative headline to kind of shake everybody out a little bit. That's kind of what I think is my thought on what's going on here in the market is that we're just grinding higher and we're just waiting for some type of bad news um, for like a flush. Now, again, we may not get any bad. You know, I don't know what is, I don't have a crystal ball and don't know what's coming up. But anyway, um, just to kind of finish the thought here, yeah, we made just lower lower highs all day long and then we try to break out of it at the end of the day. But, um, you know, here right around 1120, uh, we broke back above value, couldn't do it. Um, we tried again here at, uh, 1 p.m. and we were all over this. I mean, I was basically watching a lot of just the indices today um, and trying to sit on my hands. You know, I will always be in front of the screens because I manage a trading room. But um, you know, it's sometimes for me it's just kind of a little bit of a boring day because I know I don't want to add too much risk. I'll, I will always go through and look at different charts and try to find. But I know in my head when I, I try, when there's days where I just don't want to trade that much. Um, today was one of those days, even though we found some trades in the beginning of the day, which I'll go over. But, um, and then, then we were kind of consolidating right on the bottom of value. So this is kind of the, um, the tale of the cues on two different time frames, right? On the one hour, uh, you know, where we fell into value just for the last, uh, you know, a couple hours of the day before we rallied back. So this level is 180, and you could write this level down for tomorrow um, because this is only the valuary for the rest of the week. 184.95, 184.95. That's really the the bogey um, to watch for the queues if you do a little bit more trading in, in the queues. But again, um, you know, I actually bought a little bit of queues puts 
once we broke value for the day, and then I, I had to cover them right back on this five minute bar. I think I lost six or seven cents on that. Um, you know, and I always joke around in the room saying, now the market's going to go up when I go ahead and put a little bit of a hedge on. But yeah, I did that. I said in a few uh, April 184 puts for 97 cents, and I just jumped out of them literally eight minutes later on this. So exactly what I was saying. Again, these are my rules. You know, if we break value, I think it's and and I've got longs on. If I if if I didn't have any longs on, um, then I probably wouldn't do that trade. But I want to kind of protect my capital a little bit. And I even said as soon as I put them on, I would be more than happy to see these not work um, for the puts. But we held here, IWM. So that's kind of where the, the cues that I think that's important to watch. Just like the SPY, the IWM did not do anything today. So down 10 basis points, just a, a, a nothing there, a nothing day there. After, and that's actually not a bad thing. So just because there's chop in the market, it doesn't mean that that's bad. You're, we're digesting the previous day day's run. And again, that's just sometimes how the market works is you just get a day of digestion after, you know, IWM had this real nice performance of up, what, I think over 1% yesterday, was it? Wait for this chart. So again, that would be great if IWM leads for tomorrow. So we'll talk a little bit about, oh, um, one final thing that I thought was particularly interesting today was the move in healthcare. Healthcare names got smoked on, I would imagine it was uh, Bernie Sanders was talking about, I don't know his exact words, but I guess talking about drug pricing and possibly making, I think, Medicare for free for all or something like that. Um, and that kind of ignited a sell-off in not only healthcare, but biotech. So XBI, so there's always trade management to do if you're in some trades. Now, I don't like this XBI candle at all. Um, my thought in the beginning of the day was, hey, we had a nice candle that closed above the previous high. Let's see if we can get the continuation up and up and to the right. So big negative day, down 2.1% for biotech. We did, um, for saving grace, we closed right at the, at the bottom of value. So we'll just have to see where this goes uh, tomorrow because I do have a biotech trade on in the, um, in, in the XBI. So uh, we'll see. I mean, it, it did not get any bounce at the end of the day. It tried to bounce here a little bit and uh, just didn't have it. So, and this XLV, if we go to this on the daily chart, oh, it actually took out a virgin point of control on the one hour and then bounced a little bit from there to try to bounce i should say but um you know this has been kind of a mystery to me i've looked at this x uh, this xlv chart a couple times and it looks like it's been trying to turn the corner but it's back to the 200 day moving average again so uh, they're just not in favor right now the the healthcare there's just other other areas of the market that's had momentum healthcare just is not one of them so i continue to monitor these sectors but sometimes no trade is is the way to go um, because it looks like this XLV, which has been one of my favorite trade over the years, it's just not there right now. Um, and it's in value, right? So what I generally do is put limit orders, not, not a limit order, uh, an alert basically at the top of value and at the bottom of value when something is trading inside, which is range bound, right? And valuers do that wonderfully. All right, so moving on to some of today's trades. Let me start with the mother of all nice trades from yesterday. If you if you watched my video yesterday, you know this was one of the names that I said that I, I added to yesterday. And this thing got off to a huge uh, start today and just kept going up 4.7%. I don't even think that there was any news on this thing. But up 4.7%. And a monster move that we added, uh, the trade that we added yesterday. Uh, you notice you have an MACD crossover, first MACD crossover today. So, by the way, what they did originally, and I said I wasn't 100% sure. So, if we go to yesterday's uh, order in GoDaddy. What they did here, uh, so again, it looks very deceiving because they, they put a trade originally on the tape. And they and then they um, they canceled it and they rebooked it. So once they rebook it, it completely messes up like whether something goes on the ask side or not. But um, this may have been a short call position initially initiated because this took down open interest. This is always good to look 
and don't you know <laughs> when you see this this flow which i don't really understand i know some people don't pay any subscription for they you know they're not in a trading room but they follow flow from what other people put on twitter which i i you know again you don't have to subscribe to my room but if you're relying on option flow from what somebody tweets yeah, and you're trying to trade off of that i, I would strongly uh <laughs> disagree with that um again videos for for information purposes only but i don't know if you're trading options sorry to go off on a tangent but if you're trading options right and you're you're committing capital on trying to trade and you're looking up option flow from what people tweet and you don't want to pay a hundred dollars for a for a membership to somebody's trading room where you can find out for sure what the option flow is i i just don't get why people are trying to save a hundred bucks i mean that's literally my subscription for our elite package is 129 dollars a month that's it it's a it's like a cable bill and if you're going to trade options and commit all the the uh, day in and day out and try to put on risk and and not go into either or you just haven't found the right room and you know I would suggest trying a bunch and see what is your best fit I mean I obviously think we have the best trading room where we have a complete team environment where we're no, nobody's a showboat or anything like that we're all trying to help each other and and make and you know everybody with a common goal of making money but I I just don't get it um I see it all the time because people ask me, oh, do you think those were bought? It's like, guys, just pay, what, you, again, and you could also pay even cheaper if you just want like an, if you just want option flow from from somebody, you could probably find it cheaper. But I don't know. I, I don't get why somebody would, would uh, either trade part-time or full-time options and not invest a little bit to know what the hell's going on. But anyway, so they I believe that they they got out, they bought back a short position. And sometimes that's enough uh, for GoDaddy to to get going. Sorry, let me say that again. It, that sometimes that's enough for a name. When somebody gets spooked out and covers a short position, uh, sometimes, and again, it doesn't have to be this, this name, but sometimes that will actually act as a catalyst because somebody doesn't want to hold a short anymore. Uh, short calls and that could be that there's something up so anyway we didn't really see anything all day long in the name so again if somebody you hear somebody says that there was calls bought yesterday that was not the case um, or unless you could I guess you could make the case that maybe they covered a short position but it was not outright call buying nevertheless the name rallied well we did well in the name um, again because why because the chart setup was beautiful um, so again, sometimes the option activity just alerts me to a really good technical setup. And I think that's what we got. Um, the same thing with TPX earlier in the, in, in the week, just a really, really nice technical setup. And, you know, the option activity just kind of drew me to the name. But, um, uh, so, so here's the story. At the end of the day, somebody was buying, um, again, this is the option flow for the day. There was nothing. Um, up until about 10 minutes to go in the day. So somebody's looking for this GoDaddy to go higher. Keep in mind, I know some people have in their mind that they're like, oh, geez, I missed a 4% move. How could I do that? I can't chase it now. I'm late. But look at this base, right? If you measure this out, right, this is the width of this. I mean, you could you can um, measure this up and probably say that it could go back to 80, uh, 85 bucks right so you kind of have to think of it that way too uh, what i normally do when i see something like this and, and you're behind and you miss something i usually put on a, a small position this way if it doesn't work i'm not going to be devastated but something like this i do think that this name continues to carry higher um, is my my gut instinct on this one and look at the volume too in this the only thing to watch out by the way in this name if you go to the one hour bar I mean, it's pretty overbought here. There is if you, this 82, so maybe not 84, but 82, which is another, you know, couple bucks up. And again, it doesn't have to get right up here in a straight line. If it does chill out tomorrow, um, you know, then maybe you could kind of consider and try to get, try to think about making a, uh, this name making a move to 82. So that's my upside target for my, uh, remaining position in GoDaddy. Um, another name that's been really interesting that we've been talking about, uh, I mean, here's another one where 
if you said on day one that, oh, geez, I missed it. Um, look at what this name has done, the Scorpio tankers, where we've seen call buying now several times in this thing. Um, notice it did take out a virgin point of control today. But if you missed it yesterday, look at what it did today. It was up 10% today. So again, don't always think, because I, I hear this a lot and I try to help people, um, because I'm not a just in and out day trader, right? I'm looking for a move like these, you know, for that go on for a couple days. And you're never, it's so, so hard to kind of get in here. So, you know, if you catch it here, again, all this is all hindsight, but this is sometimes how it works, right? Is that it's a multi-day move. And that's a name that we saw call buying in several days. I sent this setup out, uh, I think two days ago, once it broke the 200, right when it broke the 200 day moving average. But um, so yeah, I mean, there's different techniques, right? I know it's tough to chase uh, because sometimes chasing doesn't work. But what I normally do is if I don't get into it right away, I will chase, but with a smaller position um, because, you know, again, up 10%. And I think we went over this one in, in yesterday's video. So especially these names, right? So it's different if it's like a, a if it's a break, a complete breakout. Um, but something that's been in consolidation for a long time, they're generally not blip, one day blips. They generally have some momentum behind them. All right. So that's the way I think wanted to, to uh, really good way to kind of think about that. Uh, what else I would say for today, you know, another, I did not take this one today. I've been in and out. I actually sold out of DHI the other day. I think it was yesterday, but, um, they went in again, the whole time with DHI, uh, this is a home builder. They've been after these May 45 calls. Now I saw this earlier in the day and I'm like, really, what's the odds? Oh, I'm sorry. This is a different strike. It says May 45. I'm, I must be thinking of a different strike. Well, that was stupid of me. <laughs> uh, I've seen DHI May calls a lot. So let me just bring this up here and I'll show you what I mean. But if we go out to May, the monthlies, yeah, it's the 43 calls that have the open interest, 47,000. It does say that, oh, this is the 44. Wow, they added to the 44s yesterday. And now they're going after the 45. So did they sell anything today? Wow, they really like this name, uh, this DHI. We've seen over and over um, little bits and pieces like this. I apologize. I thought this was a uh, against open interest. But again, I got the strike wrong. That's the 43 strike. Haha. <laughs> well, anyway, um, up 2% in this one. And um, notice, again, I've been talking about the version point of controls. Uh, you know, perfect place to take a short-term uh, target and then once it gets back above you know AMD is close to doing that too um, AMD I started a position yesterday uh, I might be in this and I, I'm in I think what July or August calls I've got plenty of time for this but um, it's not doing it hasn't really provided the um, the signal that I'm looking for yet so um, I'm kind of scaling into a position in, in AMD but again, notice how it's over this virgin point of control. So it's definitely moving the right way. And if you go to the one hour, what attracted me to this was this bar here. Unfortunately, it just didn't stay in value for the one hour, but that's okay. All right, so that's AMD. Uh, just a couple other names from today's option activity. Um, IAC saw some calls today. I followed on this, this uh, very short-term calls. Um, this is a name that I like. I see a bunch of names that are very close to breaking out. Um, uh, so they're really intriguing. If we go to the daily chart in IAC, which is a nice name, in my opinion, on option activity, it just has to get through value, right? You got a MACD bullish crossover down here, but it needs to get through value. Um, also, a couple going back to a couple of the software names, look at how close we were talking about this uh, towards the end of the day. Look at how cl how close this name looks right trying to break out. Um, so I, I got close to adding a position or adding back what I took off yesterday and kind of doing a, a, a roll out and up of calls. Um, I just didn't do it um, today yet. And maybe tomorrow I'll, that'll make me chase. Um, also service now, look at how similar this chart looks. 
also right at the top of value and trying to break out. Now this thing reports earnings in a couple weeks, uh, 425. But man, this this is really getting close to breaking out. I think both of these names go higher, uh, both ServiceNow and and um, and Coupa Software, two two, na two names in the similar industry, and the charts look so so damn similar. Salesforce had a nice day today too. Um, this one still is also trapped in value. It's got to get through, but it's certainly moving the right direction. And we've been seeing call buying in this one. Um, I did want to go over the performance in the queues uh, because I forgot to mention this. Because I, I do think it's interesting. And I know the video is already 20 minutes long, so I'm going to wrap it up here in just a minute. But, um, you know, I try to help and, and find some setups and, and talk about what we're going to be focused on for tomorrow. Uh, whoops. I don't, want to, I don't want to see options. I want to see the movers. Did, any, did you know that fast and all was in the queues? Um, that was your best performer today. But, and if you look at the, the, uh, the names that kind of were the drag, besides eBay uh, and Baidu and a couple of the uh, China Internet names, a lot of the biotech, right? Biomarin was down 3.7%. Um, VRTX was down 2.7%. INSEE, uh, Regeneron, again, all on CERN was down 2.3%. So they were the real big drag. Um, just a couple other charts. Uh, I'm watching for tomorrow. I'm looking to play like a lotto or something like that. I was either going to put on a call in Amazon just for like a lotto play for tomorrow. What I did is I have a call spread out for next week, which again is only a, a few days uh, because Friday is a holiday. Uh, not tomorrow, but next Friday is is Good Friday, and that's that will be closed for Friday. So uh, you have one day less for options expiration so just keep that in mind so that's why i you know because I, I do think it's kind of a coin flip when you're taking um uh, when you're putting on a trade for tomorrow's expiration so i would just rather give it a little bit more time for that um any other there was one other name i wanted to go over that um we saw option activity in Oh, I wanted to just go over a couple more of our trades. Uh, Boeing, you know, we managed to trade this very nice twice today. Uh, I was in Boeing. Jeez, look at Boeing after hours. <laughs> uh, uh, I dumped my I dumped calls at the end of the day. Uh, so I played this on the on the break, right? We were watching this on the first five minute bar. I actually sent this out. I normally don't don't send day trades out on the private Twitter, but I sent out uh, Boeing today. And that worked very well. And I got out. I was not greedy. Um, and then we saw calls right at the end of the day. And I tried it again and kind of scalped a little bit. Uh, and I did not leave any on. It's up to three, 372. I think they're talking about uh, that pilots are testing out the software enhancement. So there you go. We'll leave it. Uh, so congrats if you went long. If you went long some Boeing at the end of the day. Um, we'll leave it there. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow. I think tomorrow I'm just going to go out on a limb. I think tomorrow could be a, might be a fun day tomorrow. So um, hope to see you in the trading room. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.